Is making Ghibli scenes in cookie tins my thing now? Maybe. As always, our most important first step is, of course, research. <sighs> it's so beautiful. Is it crazy to say that this movie also reminds me of Ratatouille? Oh, her room! Oh my god. That's how I want to go. Her drawer is a tea box. Gotta love it. That show, If Walls Could Talk. Maybe nobody else watched that, but if these walls could talk, they'd have a whole lot to say. I feel like this movie would make a particularly good video game. A sugar cube coming to her like an Animal Crossing present. Maybe there's just some borrowers living in all my miniatures, and I have no idea. Someone call Nathan Drake. He's so creepy. Oh my god. Well, he definitely frightened me. And I've already seen the movie. I mean, honestly, he didn't pick a very good day to bring a sugar cube out, considering it's raining. That's gonna be me making this. You hear that use of silence? What I wish my miniatures looked like. I want that to be me in a field of flowers with my cat. You have good intentions, but just ruin everything. Who the heck would notice if they took one tissue and one sugar cube? Does she count all of them? I've always felt like this ending was so abrupt. I must say, I was honestly very surprised that there were not more projects from the secret world of Arietti. There literally are miniatures in the movie. Here is your preview. There is just so much going on in her bedroom. There's stuff everywhere. I relate to that very much. So before I start the miniature project, I do like to really anchor and understand the space. What better way is there to do that than staring at it for eight hours while painting it? <laughs> Here I am with a uh, pretty mediocre sketch. With me, this is about as good as it gets. <laughs> I really love about Ghibli movies is that they take something ordinary and they make you think about it in a different way. This movie is definitely a great example of that. When she walks into the kitchen with her dad, it's just this huge, unknown, like dangerous space, which I mean, maybe you might feel about the kitchen, but <laughs> another thing that they do in a lot of the films is they focus on nature, but also combine it with the mechanical, even in really small ways. There are so many different small mechanical elements in this movie even. I'm quite far into this now, but I just feel like I've made a mistake. Why did I choose to do this? Your future is full of struggle and anguish, most of it self-inflicted. But I'm this far, so there's no turning back. I love the borrower's house so much. If I could live in that house, I would. It has so many different patterns and textures and colors. They sprinkle all these like little objects throughout, like chess pieces, postage stamps, things that they've used in different ways that they sort of had to invent out of different everyday objects, which I love because that's kind of what I do as well. <laughs> if there's one thing I can say about The Secret World of Arietti, I do feel like it has the same spirit that I sort of feel about life, I guess. <laughs> Maybe that's weird to say. I don't know. We're back again with this. Starting with the base. I get a tin of butter cookies every year for Christmas. Part of Arietti's bedroom. Honestly, I would love to do the whole thing, but I just need to calm down. I started off by making a template. I'm gonna build this frame here. The window has two sections, an outer frame and the inner actual window part that swings open. Wood scraps from my Bigfoot light box. I cut all of the pieces for the frame, sanded them down, whittled away some of the edges, make it a little bit more interesting. Then I made the inner window onto a piece of paperboard from the template that I had cut out. Hot chocolate spoons, a little bit thinner than the wood from the Bigfoot light. Cut out the frame of the inner window, attached cardstock hinges onto it. I wood glued all of that together, made the middle diagonal piece 
which is essentially the same except it has two kind of triangles on the ends. Sanded all that, make sure it was clean. Before I put the plastic in for the window, I painted all of the wood green just so that it would be easier to not get paint all over the plastic. Painted the outer frame red, creating some of the highlights and shadows as well with some lighter and darker colors. I glued the inner window to the outer frame by the hinges. Then I also needed to make the little handle, made that out of wire, cut it out, and super glued it on. All that element in their kitchen with the pictures for day and night is just so cool. So I wanted to incorporate something like that in this, which meant that I needed to cut the space where the window was going to be out from the tin. Truly a trooper. He just does not even care. I used some metal snips and just did my best. It doesn't matter how good the cut is. Please just don't come at me for my metal working skills because I don't really have any. Just picture me at a forge working on a sword. The worst sword you've ever seen. I'm just gonna tape off the sides, I think. Gotta make sure we're nice and safe. Then I had to build the actual mechanism for sliding them. It's super simple. It's basically the same thing that I did in my Spirited Away miniature with the doors, except it has two layers. It's not how it works in the movie. You can't pull like a cord, but you can slide them left to right. I made frames for the day and night pictures that I was going to put into this mechanism. I painted the frames to differentiate between day and night. Now, before I put this window in, I needed to prep and paint the inside of the tin. So I created her wallpaper by painting it sort of like a leafy botanical cartoony kind of design. Close enough, at least. <laughs> Went ahead and painted the inside of the tin even though a lot of it was going to be covered up later by foliage. For painting on metal, I use a sponge brush to stipple on the paint. It adheres to the metal a little bit easier. Starting with the furniture, I needed to make the desk. The desk was super simple. It was basically just a piece of wood for the top, two little legs, and then there was a full side panel in between. I made the desk with the thicker wood, cut it, sanded it, wood glued it all together. That's essentially the process for a lot of these wooden elements. Now the chair is a mix of a lot of different types of wood. The seat and the top rung were the spoon wood and the legs were the plank wood. So I just cut the pieces out, sanded, filed them, cut out little indentations in the actual seat base for the back legs. This is gonna be a chair. Back slats of the chair I made out of toothpicks. I went ahead and made three small holes on both the top rung and the seat base the toothpicks would go into and attached the rest of the chair afterwards. I later realized that the chair that I made was not fully accurate. To be honest, I literally just complicated it more than it had to be. I actually like how this looked maybe a little bit better. Now on the chair, there is a red seat cushion. It's very thin. Cut a square out of matte board, wrapped it up like a present with a small piece of scrap fabric. Afterwards, I painted that red. Then I made the curtain rod, used a toothpick for the main base of that as well. And for the end, I just used a small round wooden bead that I had. For the curtain, I went in with that same scrap muslin fabric, cut out a piece, and hemmed the raw sides of it. We're just channeling that energy of Ariadne and her mom, sewing that bag. Honestly, my sewing skills are much more like Ariadne than her mom. <laughs> Painted the pattern on with the yellow flowers. It's a pretty simple pattern, so it wasn't too difficult. I made the curtain too small. Is it supposed to cover the entire window? Yeah, it doesn't do that. So I guess we're remaking this. The curtain is hung onto the rod kind of like a shower curtain would be, I guess, in that it has a bunch of rings on the top. To make those, I use jump rings, which are used in jewelry making. Just attach them to the curtain. Now, before we proceed, we need to go borrowing. <laughs>
this is a very small piece of the project, but I think this might have just been my favorite thing to make. There is a mortar and pestle on the desk. And so in the spirit of Arietti, we made that out of the top of an acorn. To make the actual bowl part, I cut off the stem and just sanded it down until the bottom was kind of flat enough to sit. And then the pestle I made out of the stem because it goes from thinner to a lot wider. I say a lot, it was probably like one millimeter. <laughs> Whittled the bottom down a little bit, sanded it. I don't think it looks totally accurate to the movie, but I feel like it's very in the spirit. I went ahead and painted all of the wooden furniture pieces, very yellowy brown. There weren't too many printed assets necessary for this project and honestly they weren't like fully necessary. I designed the day and night photos to look at least kind of close to the ones in the movie and I also did the tag and the papers on the walls with the little drawings and things on them. I was printing something anyway so I thought I would put them on the page. However, you could also do all of this stuff by hand drawing or painting. They're super simple drawings. A printer is not necessary. Cut out all of the printed pieces, put together the calendar. On the desk there is also a giant pencil. I'm sure this is what you signed up for today. I'm watching a video of some somebody sharpening a pencil. You're welcome. For our scale is just a normal pencil. It's a giant saw for a really tiny pencil. And then I sanded the end, painted the yellow part red. One of the more challenging parts of this project was the vase, sort of a blue glass. Just staring at it for the longest time, like what the heck am I gonna make this out of? And so I am taking one out of Bill Making Stuff's book, part of a soap dispenser. <laughs> that looks like it could be a blue glass vase. We want a very specific part here, so. Probably was not the best way to do that, but this part. Tried to clean up the edges with the tip of a heated hot glue gun. I needed to close the bottom of it. Used normal plastic from a food container. Essentially just melt the plastic and fuse the two things together. Now plastic is a material that's not the easiest to paint. I went ahead and mod podged it first. Love painting, enjoy life. That's what we're doing I guess. <laughs> Used blue gouache on top of that so that I could retain some of that transparency. You may be thinking right now, oh no, we're really doing this again? The answer is yes. Let's dye this water pink. Washable watercolors. My mom got these for me many years ago so I could paint in a coloring book. I'm sure at the time she didn't know just how important those would be later on in life because look at me now. Scrunched it into about the shape that I wanted it to be and let it dry. It started to create the stems of the flowers. Used this weird wire that I have. Basically a bunch of tiny wires. Painted it green. There were leaves on the flowers so we're taking some of the leaves that we dried and I painted them to make the colors a little bit more vibrant since a lot of the color does often fade when you dry them. Put the flowers into the vase and glued everything together. Then we have to tackle the outside of the tin. I could totally see part of Arietti's house being like inside of a cookie tin. But I did want to pay homage to the rest of the house. Sanded the outside of the tin, painted it. We're going back to elementary school kids so grab your magazines because we're collaging. Picked out a bunch of colors and textured pieces that I really liked. I love the stripes. This is kind of fun. Beautiful. Love it. After I pulled out a pretty decent amount, I laid them all out and sort of picked and choose ones that I really felt fit with the theme and with some of the colors that I was going for. Printed this one. I didn't measure it or anything, but it ended up being exactly the width of the tin, as Bob would say. Happy accidents. I also did want to include some postage stamps because they're such a big element in their house. Shout outs to my friend Hannah. She's the only one that sends me mail. I'm sure this is not what she intended. Her postage stamps to go to but here we are. I'm actually really excited about this part and also nervous to screw it up. I used Mod Podge to start gluing everything down on the outside. I just tried to make it relatively balanced. Also printed some sheet music from the film. There is a section by the door that has parts of sheet music. I know it might not look like it but I did try to make sure that the textures and patterns near each other at least kind of went with each
each other. After I had collaged the entire thing, I had four stamps, so I stuck them all around. I also had to finish off the day and night mechanism top piece, which is essentially just a rail kind of, to keep the cards in place and make them slide better. The final prep of the tin that I needed to do, painting the bottom of the tin green because I was going to lay in grass. I painted a bunch of the foliage in more vibrant different green colors and then came the assembly. from the inside of a butter cookie tin, here is a small corner of Arietti's bedroom. would have loved to do the whole bedroom, but this was indeed a very tiny tin. I do really enjoy working in different shaped and sized spaces. Yeah, I don't know. I think it turned out kind of close. Sometimes when I do Ghibli projects, I'm just like, I want to do everything. I may not have that many years of life experience, but if there's one thing I can tell you, it is so much better to do something simple well than to do something really complicated mediocrely. Maybe you have to wait till next Christmas to see the next one when I get another tin, but <laughs> I would love to see some more people do miniatures from the secret world of Arietti. So if you do this or any kind of Ghibli miniature, I would love to see it. There are so many creators making absolutely beautiful Ghibli projects, so I am going to leave some in the description if you're interested. 